0.5. Is that true? This is an alternate hypothesis. Everybody okay with that? But then what's the opposite of that hypothesis? P is less than or equal to what? 0.5. This is your setup. So the claim that the person had happened to be an alternate hypothesis. See what I mean? That's your first step. Anybody have any questions on that first step? What's your second step? Create the decision rule. What type of decision rule is this? A left tail, right tail, two tails? This is a right tail. How do you know this is a right tail? Because the alternate hypothesis has an inequality pointing to the right. It's a right tail test. Okay, now we're going to think about this. At this point, this is the do not reject the null, and this is the what? Reject. What's going to be your big issue? Determining the what? Critical value. Didn't we say that was going to be the big issue here? OK. Let's, let's figure out how to do this. Let's see if we're awake. Can you guys tell me, what in the world is alpha? What's, what's alpha again? Hmm? What does it say over there in your decision rule? It's a level of what? Significance? What is it? Isn't alpha 5%? Meaning, this portion of the bow is 5%? Don't we need to know about this in order to deduce a what? Critical value? Isn't that knowledge important? Yes, it's everything. Without it, you cannot. Find a critical value, which means every question they're going to give you the level of significance. Okay, every question has a level of significance. They're going to tell you, use this level of significance. That's your alpha. So, okay, fine. How do you now go about finding a critical value if you know this is 5% and you have a Z distribution? What was that procedure? What did you need to know? From last week. What did you need to know? You guys went home and you did all that homework, right? Oh, yeah. Of course. No, you're going to wait. I know what. Is it the one minus? You're going to wait the night before a test, and you're not going to sleep. Oh, I know how to do this. I'm going to study. Are you? Yeah, I'm going to study. I'm not going to sleep tonight. Are you impressed? Now say, that's like training to run a marathon and running the night before. How are you going to do on the day of the marathon? You're not. See what I mean? Mm. <laughs> All right, I'm going to call it next, next semester. I'm, I'm serious about this. I, I had that epiphany while I was talking to you this morning. I said, I'm, we're calling this extra credit. What do you need to know? If that's 5%, what is this? 45%. Is that right? Your Z table, the Z table I gave you is good for z values only from 0 to some positive value. So you need to know what that percent, you need to know this. Not the, you need to know this, 45%. So then work backwards, get as close as you can to 45% as possible, and see what value is associated with that. Guess what you guys are going to notice? What is it? What's the z value? What, get, why is it 1.645? Do you guys even notice? They, I think they probably have an asterisk. Why do you think they have an asterisk there? Because they knew you're going to be looking for it because that's a common value. Didn't we talk about last week that the media uses 95% confidence? 
So those are common values. These are common things that people are going to ask you. So that, that's why they have that there. So this is a 1.645. That's going to be, for people, the most difficult part. But the good news is we did it last week. Okay. All right, you guys okay with that? We're going for the next set of information. What, is, what are they saying to you here? What does this portion of information say to you? That's your what? That's your sample information. In real life, you would have to go out and take a what? Sample. We don't have time to go out and take a sample. So they're going to give you that information here. They're going to write it down. So they're going to say a sample of what? 120 students reveals that 75 are female. So what kind of information is that? If this is about a proportion, what does a 120 represent? Sample size, good. N is 120. Reveal that 75. What is that? That's your number of successes. That's 75. So when I compute my test statistic, my test statistic is the formula. Sample proportion minus the true proportion divided by the square root of p, the complement of p divided by n. And ladies and gentlemen, I have to compute that sample proportion. I already know n. n is the value of 120. I already know p. Can you guys tell me what p is? What's the value of p? p is 0.5. Good. This is the same p, 0.5, the same p, 0.5. But what is this p hat? p hat is what? 75 divided by 120. What do you guys get? What is it? 0 0.625. So the sample proportion is 0.625. Okay. Now I'm going to continue over here, and I'm going to put the test statistic, because we're going to use these examples, is going to be 0.625 minus 0.5 divided by the square root of 0.5 times, what's the complement of 0.5? What's 1 minus 0.5 here? 0.5 divided by 120, the sample size. Now, when I say that you just enter this in your calculator and hit equals, that's what you do. Okay? And I, I'd suggest you enter it this way. You see the num numerator? Put a parenthesis around the numerator. In your calculator, you got the square root. Put a parenthesis around this first value and put a parenthesis around the 120 at the end. Because what you're communicating to the calculator is what's under the radical is this product and quotient, which is why you use those parentheses. If you do it this way, compute your test statistic, then it's going to be sort of um, painless. Yeah. Yeah. And again, it also depends on your calculator. Some of you guys have calculators that just work backwards, and then that's just a, that's a whole other issue. Yeah, this is times. Yeah. What do you get? You get that? Let's see. Two point, uh, what, your critical value goes out to three decimal values, right? So do the same. So it's 2.739. Test statistic? 2.739. So
So let's see. Where does that value live on your decision rule? 2.739. Where does that value live? You see the critical value of 1.645? Is it to the right or is it to the left? It's to the right. So this is where that test statistic lives. Is that true? What neighborhood does that test statistic live in? Does it live in the do not reject the null? Or does it live in the reject the null? So we're going to reject what? The null. What is the null? It's the statement that the proportion is less than or equal to 0.5, the proportion of students who are female. So if we reject the null, the answer is going to be this. This is what you conclude. You conclude that you reject the null hypothesis. Rejecting the null, notice what rejecting the null means, though. It means that your alternate statement is what? Is a valid statement based on your sample. So based on this sample, you can think that the proportion certainly is what? Greater than 50%. And it makes sense because look at the sample proportion. Isn't the sample proportion certainly greater than 50%? It's saying that, you know what? Based on the sample, um, the proportion of students who are female is about 63%. So certainly the sample does verify the claim. And that's all we did. We're not telling, we're not even saying what the true proportion is. We're just saying we think that the proportion is greater than 50%, and that was verified. So this is your first hypothesis test. Question. Um, say that again. No, no, no. This is zero. And as you walk this way, the values get what? Larger. So if this is 1.645, we have a value of 2. Point what? What is it? 2.739. That's your test statistic value. That value is to the right of the 1.645. Larger values live to the right. Smaller are to the left. Yes. Did you erase it? No. You, you, know, you guys know why I like these calculators? No, I think I even suggested to get the other one. Who has the one I suggested? Yeah. You could even see the same thing there, too. It works the same exact way. Is that you get to see all the information here. So then you could even go back and just double check everything. You know, because you're just putting in all this stuff. You can go, OK, 0.625 minus 0.5 in parentheses, divided by oh, square root of 0.5 times 0.5 divided by 1. Oh, OK. Then you could trust your answer. So yeah, this is. This is, uh, this is going to be beneficial. Okay, those calculators like yours that work backwards, that's a nightmare. What model is that? Uh, what model is a nightmare? No. It's a TI-83. I suggest to students um, buy this calculator because it works the same way. It works exactly the same way. It's a Casio FX300MS. It's solar. It's probably about less than 18 bucks. It's twenty what? Twelve ninety nine. Nine dollars. Where? Target nine bucks. When I was there, they were gone. So um, you don't have to go spend a lot of money. But don't buy it. 